In this video we're going to show and explain some of the different recording methods that are possible with our recorders. So first you're going to want to go into manual and then record. And th this is going to tell you what your camera channels are set to record. So here as you can see our mainstream is set to auto for all. And this is following the schedule for your settings that you have. The manual would be for 24-7 continuous recording. And then stop means that you do not wish to record that channel. For the substream, it is set to stop for default. Here we have set it to manual because we want to have the substream recording continuously 24-7 while the mainstream is for motion activated events or to follow the recording schedule that we have set in place. And here, let's say you wanted to record snapshots um, via events or alarm input, then you would also have to enable that here. We're going to leave that disabled for the video. Then you can move on to the main menu, then under storage. Here we've already gone to the schedule tab, and you can see that we've already set general recording throughout the day, motion detection throughout the night, and then we have an intel setting throughout the day. So that is for the IVS functions which we'll cover later in the video. So for a good example here, we're going to show that channel 2 has recording for general, motion detection, and the IVS functions all day. And here's a blank slate on channel 3. So just kind of go through the options here. As you can see, general is 24-7, or the recording for that schedule that you have set. Motion detection would be yellow, alarm is red, and that's an alarm input in the back. MD and alarm stands for motion detection and alarm. That's a mix of the two that you ha can configure. And then, as I said, the intel is for IBS functions such as digital tripwire, face detection, object detection. Again, that depends on the, both the recorder and the camera itself. So let's say we just wanted to get um, general recording throughout the day. We're gonna actually use the erase button here to erase everything and go from, say, 8 a.m. to about 6 p.m. And then throughout the night we're going to want motion detection in case there's anything that happens. And let's say we have some digital tripwires or you know more robust analytics going on for our cameras and we want to have that throughout the day and throughout the night that way in case anything does happen. So then you can go ahead and um, select that for all when you do this as well. As you can see it brings the line across for all of them motion detection as well till 8 in the morning and then general throughout the day get rid of everything else and then general throughout the day or you can also do this in the table based format here where you can see you have certain periods for each individual setting and you can also copy that to all the days I'm just going to kind of demonstrate here that you can select copy and select all the days and we're going to take off the motion detection and see that reflected here. As you can see it all went away. Pre-record is the amount of video in seconds that will be pre-pended to the video recorded for event detection such as motion detection or smart detection. This way you will see 30 seconds of what led up to the motion event. Here are the snapshot settings that you can also set and you would generally leave this to general or motion detection and then that also depends on your other snapshot settings but those will be covered in another video. Keep in mind that the motion detection for these recorders and the cameras is done via the video based motion detection. It does not use an actual sensor, it is based on the pixels or pixels changing. So here you can see we have a shipping tag. So when the camera senses that movement, there are actual pixel changes on there. So let's say if you were just standing over here and, and flipped the light switch, then any of these cameras in the warehouse would actually be triggered because they would sense that the light has changed. You can see the, the motion detection here is by this little icon, and that would also trigger the event to record at that, that moment when that icon comes up. And you can see here in the other views for our warehouse, there is no motion, so it would not record on that. But to actually enable motion recording on that channel, you'd first have to go to main menu, then alarm. And here you can see there are several tabs on the left hand side. The one for motion detection is called video detect. Now keep in mind you have to enable this with this toggle right here. So I've just disabled it for channel 2. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable it. But this has to be enabled for each and every channel that you want to record on. 
And down here you can see that the period, this is just the schedule that motion detection is enabled for and you can um, change that if you need to. Really you can leave that one alone because it's going to take your schedule settings from the other schedule earlier in the video. The alarm out setting is for if you have an external alarm that you would like this uh, motion detection event to actually sound off on. And the same goes for the buzzer, only the buzzer is for the actual internal sound on the DVR to make a noise. And you can also, um, as we said earlier, you can create snapshots. And this is where you would have to tick that box to create snapshots. Again, that would be based on your um, settings for snapshots, such as the schedule or where you want the snapshots to record. It is important to understand this menu, but we have channel 1 selected. Channel stands for camera number. The highlighted squares on the record channel and snapshot field show that I have this channel itself selected. Here we do not have snapshots enabled. And then send email. We have other guides on how you can send email alerts to your email or smartphone. The tour setting refers to which camera is being displayed on the TV monitor connected to the recorder via HDMI or VGA. If you have a monitor connected directly to your recorder, you can enable the tour setting to display the camera number that has motion detection in full screen view. This is useful for a convenience store or other retail application. Then you can even log it in the DVR or recorder's logs. Post record is for how much long you want to record after the event happens. Now notice there's two other tabs here. So video loss is um, some of the cameras in recorders actually can detect when a signal is being lost from the camera. And then you can you know, configure what kind of alerts you want to get or settings you want to get when this happens. Of course it has a, to log it in the recorder as a default. Now tampering is actually for if the video signal is detected however the output or from the video is blacked out or let's say you know somebody tries to cover the surveillance camera then it will actually alert you for that and you can uh, mess around with these settings as a certain sensitivity or thing like that. But we're going to focus back on the motion detection because you're going to want to set regions and here you can see we have this whole camera set up for a region. So we're going to go to another channel where we can kind of see where we have multiple regions set up. And here you can see we don't really care about cars maybe driving through the parking lot here. So we've since um, you know clicked and then dragged and got rid of those squares for that specific area. But then if you want you can set separate areas. So let's say we want we wanted to actually monitor that but we wanted to not have as much sensitivity. So we're going to set some yellow zones up here. You can control how video based motion is detected by toggling the sensitivity and threshold settings. Sensitivity refers to the amount of pixel change in each little rectangle in your region. And the threshold is the amount of rectangles that have changes happening in order for motion to be activated. But provided you have all of these region settings set up properly, you should be able to get the motion detection that you need for your specific use case. Some of our recorders and cameras support smart detection functions, also known as IVS. To enable this, first you're going to have to go to right click, then manual, then record. You're going to want to make sure that the mainstream is set to auto on the channel that you wish to use the smart detection function on. Here we're focusing on channel 2 and we have it set to auto. You're going to want to click apply and then back. To get to the IVS menu you're going to right click, go to main menu, then IVS or smart detection. The first tab is the Intel setting and we're primarily focusing on channel 2. To make sure this rule is enabled first, you're going to want to go to Smart Plan, select your channel, and make sure that this IVS button is blue. As you can see, you can disable it or enable it. Then you're going to want to click Apply, and then go up to the top left to the Intel setting, and make sure you're still on the same channel. Here we have Channel 2, now we're going to add a new rule. Here we have a Tripwire rule. We can draw this rule. We're going to click here, drag it across, another click, and right click to stop drawing the rule. As you can see, we can select the direction. Here we'll have both because we want to know when somebody enters the office and also leaves the office. Click OK to create the rule. Then you're going to want to click, go down to the bottom right and click Apply to also apply the rule. You can also go to the trigger settings to set up a buzzer for the DVR or recorder to make an audible sound when the event happens. 
and then also set up post record, which is the amount of time that is appended to the end of the event when the event happens. And as you can see here in the live view, we have the rule created, and you can visibly see where that rule is for your DVR recorder to pick up an event that happens through that tripwire. Thank you for watching.